Hi guys, welcome to my COVID-19 response and preparedness series. I'm going to call it COVID-19 wrap and here we will be discussing about the virus, learning some things about the virus and also talking about practical steps we can take every day in order to keep ourselves safe, our family safe and the communities we live in safe in this time. A virus has three purposes to infiltrate, to duplicate and to spread from one organism to another till the virus or the organism it is in is dead. That is the only thing which will stop the virus. So let us break it down. A virus enters and infiltrates. Who does it enter? Who does it infiltrate? Us. So we can do something to stop it. A virus replicates or duplicates. Where does it replicate? Inside us. So definitely we can do something to stop it again. And third, spreads from where does the virus spread again it spreads from us if we are infected it is our responsibility to stop the chain of spread from us to anybody else and that is where the r naught will reduce what is r naught r naught is communicability of a disease or if one person is infected how many people that one infected person spreads the disease to so a pandemic will decline when the r naught is less than one which means one infected person should infect only 0.9 which means if there are 100 people they will infect only 90 then the 90 80 and the 80 70 and that's how a pandemic declines so in order for us to see the declining curve guys we need to take certain steps to help ourselves an inefficient virus kills its host but a smart virus lives with it. The SARS-2 CoV is not an inefficient virus. It is not killing 98% of the people it infects, which means the people who are at high risk or are getting severe forms of the disease or are unfortunately dying have some other problems which are going on inside. This SARS-2 CoV is exposing certain issues we have been living with for a very long time. And we should use this as an opportunity to turn ourselves into that kind of a hope in whom the virus is comfortable living for longer without trying to kill us. The reason is if we manage to keep the virus alive in us for longer then our immune system will definitely find a way to destroy the virus and make it a part of our microbiome. The concept of a microbiome is not a new one but it is the concept which makes most sense to me right now. It says that in our body apart from our human cells there is a multitude of microorganisms which coexist in our body and they play an extremely important role in our immunity. So when we do not take steps to protect our microbiome or the microorganisms which live in us, for example, our gut bacteria, what happens is it affects the equilibrium of every system in our body, starting from our guts. When it affects our guts, it affects our empathy. When it affects our empathy, we stop caring. When we stop caring, our health gets worse. And when our health deteriorates, our immunity is crippled, making us susceptible to infections like the COVID-19. So guys, let us understand what we need to do to protect ourselves from this. Now I'm also going to take this opportunity to discuss the latest symptoms which have been updated on June 11th in the National Institute of Health. They say that apart from the common and respiratory symptoms which we know we should also look out for headaches conjunctivitis that is irritation of the eye redness of the eye nausea vomiting and diarrhea skin rashes and clot formation on your body very close to the rash we are also seeing inflammatory lesions on the toes called chill blains and apart from this loss of smell is something you guys need to know so if you're cooking something spicy in your kitchen and you're not able to smell it guys definitely think about this now that we have spoken about the latest symptoms and updated our information on that let me give you five evidence-based principles you can use them as core concepts to build your adaptation and personalize it to lead your lives in a safe manner during this COVID-19. Call it your response and preparedness. First, surroundings. Pay attention to your surroundings. By this I mean at all points of time, make sure that anybody in a six feet vicinity of you is wearing a mask. Masks are good 
Masks are great to wear in a community. They reduce incidence of infection. Any kind of mask would do. The job of the mask is to just prevent infection from you going out if you are infected. And that's because it helps in reducing the R0 or the infectivity of the disease. You have an infection, you're wearing a mask, R0 reduces. You have an infection, you're not wearing a mask, you're spreading the infection, R0 doesn't reduce and the pandemic continues. So please wear a mask. Many countries which have instituted the mandatory mask are now on the declining graph. So I humbly suggest that all of you take the effort to wear masks because reducing the R0 is extremely important for bringing our graph down. Also, another thing I really want to talk about is when you are wearing a mask, remember you're not breathing to your full capacity. And if you are infected, the virus is kept within the mask and inside your mouth. So if anyone pulls a mask down in order to talk to you in your vicinity or within three feet of your face, please do not allow that and you do not pull the mask down and talk to because when we do it, we breathe in and we breathe out when we speak, which means the area involved between the two people communicating becomes a zone of infection and we need to avoid that. Apart from this, I also wanted to bring to your notice that wearing a mask helps in preventing other pollutants entering inside also because there has been a study which shows that Cities which have more pollution have more incidences of infection and more infections proceeding to a severe condition. I will explain later what is the correlation. But as of now, there are a lot of advantages for yourself also in wearing a mask. So please think about it. Number two, the high risk groups, hypertensives and those with cardiac issues, diabetics and those with kidney issues, those with pre-existing lung disorders, smokers, those who are obese and people with cancer. They are the high risk group and we need to do our level best to protect them from getting the infection as they have a very high chance of going into the serious form of the disease. Now, how do we do it? If you're a diabetic, please monitor your sugar and control your sugar. Make sure your HbA1c is below seven. If you're a hypertensive, do not stop any medication. Make sure you take all your essential medication, medication for your cardiac issues, or for your hypertension, or for your blood thinning regularly. Please do not stop anything without consulting your physician. Avoid processed foods. Do not eat anything out of a packet. Make sure you don't take any sugary drink or any carbonated drink. No chips, nothing with salt on it. You have to make sure that anything you eat is a complex carbohydrate. Basically, it has to be digested in order to release energy and sugar. So a high fiber diet with good protein is perfect along with a lot of naturally occurring vitamins and minerals. Regular exercises for your muscles, for your lungs, cardiovascular exercises, breathing exercises are of immense help. Meditation and exposure to the sun regularly also help. Number three, vitamin D, zinc and vitamin C. Severe form of the disease has been associated with a deficiency of vitamin D. So please talk to your doctor about vitamin D and get your vitamin D supplements. Recommendations are evolving. Currently it is 60,000 international units per week orally till you reach a blood level of 60 nanograms per deciliter. Now coming to vitamin C, vitamin C is extremely essential for our gum care and for our teeth health. Gingivitis, inflammation of the gums happens when you have a vitamin D deficiency and that reduces your immunity. Apart from that, vitamin C plays a very important role in collagen synthesis. So any injuries in your skin or mucous membrane require vitamin C for complete regeneration. Zinc. Zinc is essential for the functioning and production of 300 hormones and enzymes. Without these hormones and enzymes, there is absolutely no way that we are able to produce immune cells or the necessary energy to keep our immune system strong. So guys, let us make sure we supplement vitamin D, vitamin C and zinc. I have made a video about how to supplement it. Please check it out. I will add it in the description below. And I'm also going to give you a recipe of a multivitamin drink, which you can use for that. You need 100 grams of Moringa olifera or drumstick leaves. It is available in plenty in India. And if you're not from India, it is available as organic Moringa olifera powder, and it has the same benefits. So if you're using the powder, one tablespoon of the powder 
along with that a tablespoon of honey with half a teaspoon of grated ginger and turmeric if you can add a big dollop of yogurt or homemade curd in it nothing like it now let me tell you how this helps you moringa olifera is nutritious it is one of the best things which is available for vegetarians or literally anybody to eat because it has 25 times the iron as much as what spinach has it has seven times the vitamin c as much as oranges have it has four times the vitamin a as much as carrots do apart from that it has vitamin b and it has a lot of antioxidants not only this it has 18 amino acids in it so it has all the proteins which you need for body building also and honey is also an antimicrobial grated ginger and turmeric of course they reduce inflammation all over your body and they also have antimicrobial properties ginger also soothes your stomach and adding of homemade yogurt or curd makes sure that you give the probiotics which are needed for your gut also so guys please try this recipe tomorrow and put down in your comments how you like the taste and how you felt the whole day after you tried it now that the multivitamin herbal blend recipe is done Let us talk about point number 4 the pulse oximeter. I recommend a pulse oximeter during this period and let me tell you why. Just imagine if we had a pandemic at this point of time where the symptom was of inner fever which we could not feel on the outside. How would we tackle it? We would buy a thermometer and we would see the temperature so that we know and take care if our temperature is increasing. The same principle should be applied with the covid-19 and the hypoxia associated with it generally when somebody has a covid-19 infection and they have respiratory distress what happens is the oxygen levels in your lungs reduce so the oxygen levels in the tips of your fingers and the extremities also reduce generally this causes your brain to become stimulated and it increases our breathing rate and we respire more that is what causes respiratory distress most of the time we breathe more and our oxygen levels are restored but when we are unable to is when respiratory distress or shortness of breath sets in covid-19 in some patients though the brain is not able to sense the fall in oxygen and they continue to have a fall in oxygen saturation till it becomes very serious and in order to avoid that buy a pulse oximeter and habitually check it once in the morning and once in the night to make sure that your saturation is not going below 95 remember even if your saturation is low the treatment is oxygen supportive care and a few medication the trick here is to identify that your saturation is falling as soon as it falls and then the results are very very promising five oral and nasal hygiene and relationship of covid-19 infection to pollution i'd like to bring two things to your notice here one there was a study done in china where ppes were not available they made the hospital staff to rinse their mouth and their nasal cavity regularly before and after they finished their duties in the covid ward they found that after a month the incidence of infection and the progression of infection to severity in the hospital staff who were practicing regular oral and nasal hygiene was way lesser than in hospitals where this was not practiced so this gives us more than enough evidence to start practicing good oral and nasal hygiene simple washing of mouth and brushing your teeth and rinsing it regularly after food will help and then the relationship of covid-19 to pollution studies have shown that when the pollution levels are high the incidence of infection and the progression to severity is also greater and this is because when you are inhaling covid-19 along with polluted say carbon monoxide some carbon dioxide some lead some cyanide in the atmosphere your innate immune system or your neutrophils the cells which come and protect us immediately cannot see a difference between the covid-19 and the toxins in the air they attack all of them equally so the efficacy of your wbc against the covid-19 infection is lesser and this is one of the reasons why incidence of infection is higher in cities where pollution is more and you know what wearing a mask stops the pollutants from entering inside your nose and mouth and this gives a chance for your immune system for your immune cells 
to focus and fight only on the COVID-19 infection. This is another reason, guys, why you have to wear masks and why it will help. Now, this is what I have put up as the skeletal idea, the core on which you can build. If you have any doubts, just type COVID wrap response and preparedness and put your question down and I will make sure I answer it to the best of my abilities. Thank you guys. If you like this video and you like the information which you heard, subscribe to my channel. Till then, bye-bye.